All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, this is How to Build an IT Roadmap. My name is Steve Tilkins. I'm a VMware Technical Account Manager, and I'm excited to be here. So let's jump right in. So quick agenda. Uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction, talk about who I am real quick. And then I have essentially two goals for today. Uh, number one, I want everyone to leave with uh, a good understanding that it's important to have an IT roadmap. And uh, hopefully we'll all agree there. And then the other goal is going to be everyone should have at least a basic understanding of how to build a basic IT roadmap, right? We've only got a half hour, so it's not going to be a very in-depth, comprehensive roadmap. It's going to be pretty basic, but it may be you know, completely sufficient for what you need. So I'll talk about some strategy, tips, and tricks. And then um, the last 10 minutes or so, we're going to jump into kind of a more interactive uh, deep dive where we, we kind of build one together. So. So that's the plan. All right, so a little bit about me. Uh, like I said, I'm a VMware Staff Technical Account Manager, or a TAM. You may have heard that. You may have a TAM. If you do, hit me up after. I'd love to chat with you. Um, so I am based out of Sacramento, California, which I'm spoiled. It's only about two hours from here, so uh, I just took the train in. And I work primarily with state and local government customers, or SLED, you may have heard that. So state of California customers. Um, I have worked in the past with some enterprise and some healthcare customers. Uh, from a social perspective, you can see my blog there. And then on Twitter, I, I tweet a little bit here and there. Um, but there's my Twitter handle, handle as well. Um, and then more personal, from a hobbies perspective, I like to uh, hike. I like backpacking, camping, and then, of course, technology. Um, I have a home lab. In fact, I did a V. Brombeg session maybe a year and a half ago where we kind of dived into my, uh, my home lab, but uh, it's perfect in the, the role that I'm in as a TAM because um, I get to you know, try out my customers' use cases and the questions that they have in my home lab and you know, play with the technology and things like that. So uh, that's a little bit about me. All right, so let's jump right in. So why do you need a roadmap, right? So this is a pretty powerful quote. You've probably seen it, but a goal without a plan is just a wish, right? And I absolutely believe that. So let's use the example of, let's say you wanted to run a marathon. Uh, that's a goal. That's a great goal, right? But if you don't put a plan in place to get there, then it's just a wish, because it's never going to happen, right? So you should be breaking it down to say, OK, I've got six months to train for this thing. I should be running X number of miles you know, a month before, or something like that. So, um, and it's the same thing with IT. So if you have you know, some strategic vision from your upper IT leadership around we want to be more uh, mobile, right? We want to enable our customers from a mobility perspective, right? That's a goal. But if you don't put something in place to make that happen, it's, it's never going to happen. So it's just a wish, right? So uh, just keep that in mind. So I've broken down why you need a roadmap into essentially five main ideas and themes. So we'll go through that here real quick. So starting from the left, uh, it's going to make you more strategic, right? So you'd be surprised how many organizations don't have any kind of an IT roadmap. Um, and typically, they act very tactical and reactive, right? So they come in every morning. They may have an idea of some of the things they need to get done, but really they're just fighting fires and they're firefighters, right? So having a roadmap is going to help keep you on track to focus on the things that you need to get done to reach your business outcomes, right? So you'll be a lot more strategic and proactive. Um, it's going to help you prioritize. So the first step to building a roadmap is you're going to have to identify all the things you need to get done, right? So tasks, ongoing maintenance things, patches, projects, things like that, maybe enablement. And the next step to that is you're going to put them in an, a logical order. So you're going to be a lot more organized from that perspective. So you'll be able to kind of prioritize and then align that with the business, right? And then good segue into business alignment. So once you have a basic roadmap, you'll want to socialize that with the rest of the IT organization, right? Because they may have some other team like the SQL department or the IT or the, uh, the database team. They may have you know, a known Oracle upgrade and you were planning on doing maybe a, a vSphere upgrade that same weekend. And you know, by bringing it to light, you can now coordinate around that and make sure there's no impact to the business. So um, again, just, just making sure you're driving towards those, those desired business outcomes, right? Um, a roadmap will definitely help with budget justification. So we all need money for projects, for services, for you know, products, enablement, things like that. So if you go to your IT leadership and say, hey, I need $2 million, 
you better have some kind of a plan around how you're going to spend that money and you know what the ROI is. So um, it will definitely help in that aspect. Um, and of course, getting like more resources, right? So if you have a roadmap and it's got all these different tasks and there's only two people in the department, that's going to be a pretty big red flag. Like we need to hire some more folks here, right? Uh, and then the last one is just generally succeed or success, right? So there's two different aspects to this. Uh, from a personal perspective, if you are able to build a roadmap and then execute on that roadmap, uh, your leadership is going to see that and be like, well, this guy here knows how to execute and build a plan and actually deliver, right? So when it comes time for promotion and you know, upward mobility, you're going to get recognized for that. And then also from a business perspective, being able to build a roadmap and execute against that, you'll be meeting those you know, strategic initiatives and the business uh, outcomes. So there's probably a lot more here, but I kind of broke it down to just these five. So let's move forward. Um, let's actually talk about the process. There's, there's lots of processes to build a roadmap, right? This is the one I like to use, and I didn't invent it. I stole it from folks that I've met along the way and kind of tweaked it here and there. Uh, but it's, it's pretty straightforward and it's, it's pretty fun. So number one, you're going to gather your team, right? So you'll want to get your leadership and your technical staff, get them in a room. Hopefully you have a whiteboard and a big wall, something like that. If you're a large IT organization, you probably don't want to get the entire IT organization into a room, right? It's, it's going to get out of control real fast. So keep it small at first. Maybe meet with just leadership to get an understanding of their strategy and where they want to see the business going. And, um, you know, those IT goals and things like that. And then start breaking it down and going to the IT staff, uh, the technical folks, because they're going to have valuable input. But you want to have that vision, right, from, from senior leadership. So why do you want to have a whiteboard or a large wall? Because uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to use post-it notes, right? Different colored post-it notes. Hand them out and hand out some pens. Everyone's going to start jotting down things that they know need to get done. So projects. Um, you know, routine maintenance tasks like firmware upgrades, security patching, maybe a vSphere upgrade or enablement, things like that, right? Don't worry about putting these in any kind of logical order, just, just get them written down, right? Put them on the wall. And then the next step, obviously, we're going to start putting those in a, a particular order. So um, it's going to be different for every organization, but it should be in some kind of a chronological order. You, you'll definitely identify the dependencies, right? So if you need to do a vSphere upgrade from 6 to 6.5, for instance, but your hardware doesn't support 6.5, obviously you need to do a hardware refresh first, right? So those things will come up. And then you'll also have the ability to build into the, the roadmap the business priorities as well. So um, I used to support an accounting firm, and they did essentially did taxes, right? So during tax season, they said no changes, right? We're not going to be upgrading SharePoint or something like that. So. Uh, we focused on enablement and things like that, so um, that's where it comes into play, right? The business priorities as well. So that's it. I mean, that's pretty much the high-level strategy, and it's pretty straightforward, and it's actually pretty fun. So uh, we'll get into a few tips and tricks here, and then we'll actually get into building one on the fly, um, and it should be pretty fun. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, keep it fun. Um, I've done this with a couple of my customers, and it's usually a pretty good exercise. Um, it ends up being a pretty good team building event as well, right? Because in IT, we all have our you know, roles and responsibilities and we're pretty head down focusing on the things we need to do, but we don't really care about what the other folks are doing. So it's great to get everyone in a room and you know, everyone has the ability to essentially talk about the things that they want to get done, the things that are important to them, and it's a, it's a real good team building event. So keep that in mind. So the roadmap is going to comprise a lot of small tasks and projects, and ultimately that's going to support a much bigger goal, right? So if you look at a roadmap, look at any one item, let's say firmware upgrades, that's pretty tactical, right? Not very strategic. Um, but if you look at the roadmap as a whole, all these different things on there should ultimately lead to some much bigger strategic initiative, right? So we'll go back to the example of uh, workforce mobilization, right? Having a mobile workforce. Firmware upgrades may not sound like it's in support of that, but if that follows, or if you follow that with like a Horizon upgrade and then Workspace One deployment, ultimately the whole roadmap is supporting that initiative, right? So keep that in mind. 
Um, you're going to want to categorize the roadmap, so the items on the roadmap. That's where the different color sticky notes come into play. So I typically like to do it by team if it's a relatively small IT shop. So you know, infrastructure team, database team, storage, VDI, desktop. Um, and that way, the items on the roadmap will, will correspond to who's going to be doing the work, right? Um, you can also do it based off of related projects or however else you want to categorize it. Maybe you have one color for like an ongoing maintenance task or things that you're doing regularly, right? So use that. Um, this is an important one. Establish realistic timelines. So you're going to have delays, right? You're going to have hiccups. You're going to have things that go wrong and your roadmap is going to get changed, right? So um, make sure you're building the things into your roadmap so there's enough time to accomplish the task, right? Let's take the example of a vSphere upgrade, right? If you've got four vCenters and 100 hosts, maybe you could do that over a weekend, maybe, if everything goes perfect. But would you do it over a weekend? Probably not. You'd probably want to schedule it over a couple weeks, work with the business. You'll have different clusters that you don't want to impact applications and just build enough time because there's always unforeseen delays, right? Um, your roadmap will never be quote unquote done. So don't get frustrated because it's always going to be changing. There's going to be new business priorities that come up. Uh, you're going to need to shift things around. You may have those delays. Maybe there's a firmware bug or something like that and it's going to completely derail your roadmap. But just keep in mind that that's going to happen, right? Um, also, you'll never get to the end of a roadmap, right? If you build an 18 month roadmap and you get 12 months in, you've completed all this you're going to now add another 12 months. So you'll probably never get to the end. It's always going to be a rotating thing. Um, this is a good one. So once you have a working draft of your roadmap, look for things that you can automate or improve upon, just general process improvements. So if you have your roadmap and you've got three months to do firmware upgrades and you've got 12 hosts, that's uh, a red flag, right? Why is it taking three months to do firmware upgrades? So Look for opportunities. They're going to be visual, so you'll be able to identify them a little faster. Um, and maybe there's some tools or processes that you can put in place to, to help improve things, right? And one last thing. Once you have your roadmap, and it doesn't need to be you know, a finalized version that you've framed and put on your wall, but communicate that with the rest of the business. And I don't mean you know, all the end users and stuff, but the rest of the IT organization uh, and maybe senior business leadership, right? Because the more you do that, the, it's, a, it's a feedback loop, right? They're going to have input, input and it's going to change your roadmap, right? So the example I used earlier of sharing it with the database team where they're doing an Oracle upgrade and we don't want to do both at the same time, right? So it also may put pressure on other departments. You know, if, if you show them your roadmap and they don't have one, maybe they're going to say, well, maybe I should do something like that too, right? So, um, all right, so those are tips and tricks. So. Let's jump into an example here. And I wanted to do this interactive where you guys were telling me things we should put on the roadmap, but there were just way too many unknowns here. And I couldn't use my laptop, so I, I just recorded it, right? So, um, so I use a Mac. And what you're looking at here is just OneNote. I put in some swim lanes for quarters, the next six quarters. And then on the bottom, I've got different colors for the different teams. So we've got infrastructure team, uh, monitoring, automation, VDI, network, exchange, and patching. And hopefully you guys can see this. So Mac has a really great app called Stickies, which is essentially exactly what it sounds like. It's little sticky notes, right? And I think Windows has the same thing. Um, so it's nice because you can move them around and you can resize these sticky notes to make it look like, okay, it's taking a quarter or two quarters, right? Uh, whereas if you're doing it on a wall with actual sticky notes, it's not going to be as flexible, but it also gives everyone in the room an opportunity to get up and start moving things around as well. So uh, this works pretty well if you've got a remote team and there's people all over the place. So, so what I've done is I've just started throwing things out here. So uh, I'll read them off as we go in case it's too small. So we've got firmware upgrades. We'll keep that yellow with the infrastructure team. Um, maybe this organization just signed an ELA and we got the whole vCloud suite, so we got vRealize and NSX. Um, that's not in the vCloud suite, but maybe they bought that as well, right? So we're going to do a vROPS deployment. 
Um, and then after that, we'll do some customization. And then we want to put things like enablement in there as well. Uh, of course, we have security patching, which is an ongoing thing. So that's with the patching team. And then we've got things like NSX, where we're going to go through the design. And then we're going to ultimately get to the deployment. And again, I'm not putting these in order yet. I'm just, just getting it down, right? All the things we need to do. And then we'll, we'll start moving it around. Um, we want to we also include the enablement for NSX. Maybe the team doesn't know it very well and they need to come up to speed. We have a vSphere upgrade. We want to do some training for maybe we're running vSphere 6 and we want to learn about vSphere 6.7. Uh, we want to do a VMC on AWS POC. Um, we have a hardware refresh. And then over to the VDI team, they need to do a Horizon upgrade and uh, Windows 10 migration. So from Windows 7 to Windows 10. And then an Office 365 migration. So that's a pretty common one I see a lot. So that's going to be the Exchange team. And that's supposed to be purple, but it looks kind of blue. Um, this one you may, you may be familiar with, getting off of Windows Server 2012. That's coming end of life here in the next relatively soon. I'm not sure of the date. So we want to migrate to 2016 or 2019. Uh, we have a VRA deployment. And then we're going to start building some blueprints. And then, of course, we want to include the VRA enablement so the team knows how to use the product. Um, and then back to that workforce mobility you know, strategic, uh, up strategic goal is the Workspace ONE deployment. And then we want to include enablement for that as well. And then I think I've got one more. This was kind of an afterthought, but very important. If you're doing any kind of VRA or VROPs, you want to spend some time working with the business to identify the requirements for monitoring and you know, what do you want to automate, that sort of stuff. So. I put that in as well. So now, now we're going to start moving things around a bit. And this is a very aggressive roadmap, by the way. This is a lot of stuff going on. So don't think there's like three people and we're going to get all this done. It's not going to happen, right? Um, but it's typical. I, I see it a lot as a TAM because a lot of customers do buy these products and right, we need to put something together as far as how we're going to implement it all. All right, so we've got our vSphere upgrade. And we need to do firmware upgrades before that. So that's obviously going to come before it. We want to put kind of during the same timeline uh, vSphere enablement. And then once all that's done, we'll start focusing on upgrading our guest operating systems, or migrating or upgrading or whatever, whatever it works for that application. Um, sometime in that, we'll also do a VMC on AWS POC. That's going to take about three months. And then moving over to the VDI team, they're going to do a Horizon upgrade, but they want to wait until after the vSphere upgrade. So that's going to be not till Q4. And then part of that, we're also going to kind of include the Windows 7 to Windows 10 migration. So they're going to build a brand new Horizon environment and then just migrate users from that into the new environment with Windows 10. And then after that, we'll do the Workspace ONE deployment. So it would have been fun to do all this interactively, but it would have also been probably a big mess. But <laughs> it would have been interesting, to say the least. Um, okay, and then we've got security patching. That's basically an ongoing thing, right? So every quarter, we've got a patch cycle. That's just going to be across the entire uh, roadmap there. Let's see. So let's say the Horizon environment is running on older hardware. So we're going to need to take care of that hardware refresh before we do the Horizon upgrade, right? So we'll do the hardware refresh, the vSphere upgrade, and then the Horizon upgrade. And then the network team is going to start working on NSX sometime in Q4. Yep, beginning of Q4. And that's going to take a little bit of time to do the design. And then the deployment. We'll follow that. And that's going to take a bit of time because we want to do that in dev, QA, uh, staging, prod, right? 
Uh, of course, we have NSX enablement. So you can see the roadmap is starting to kind of come together and look more logical. Uh, and then over to the monitoring and automation team. So they're going to start defining those requirements fairly early, working with the businesses, working with the different uh, you know, application teams, things like that, to understand what they want to see, KPIs, uh, what do they want to automate, things like that. And then following that, we will deploy VROPS. And we'll do that in dev, QA, you know, prod. Uh, by the way, each one of these is probably going to have its own project plan because these are pretty big things to do, uh, you know, where you're tracking the resources and things like that. And then we do VROPS customization where we're building custom dashboards and setting up our role-based access control. We have VROPS enablement. And then once we have the VROPS deployment completed, we are going to install VRA. So that will be a deployment task. That's going to take about two months or so. Uh, and then we have a very long process of customizing VRA, developing blueprints, identifying the things we want to you know, automate, things like that, integrating with IPAM, you know, maybe InfoBlock, something like that. And then finally, the exchange team is working on their Office 365 migration, and that's going to take a while to get done. So that's essentially the process. I mean, we went through it pretty quick. We've got a few more minutes left. Um, what you would do from this point then, right, take a screenshot, take a picture of what's up on the wall, and then come back to some other tool that's going to look a little bit more presentable. I like to just use PowerPoint. It's pretty straightforward. You could use Excel. You could use Microsoft Project, something like that. But ultimately, what you'll kind of put together is something that looks more like this, right? So this is a nice format because you can update this maybe once a week or every two weeks, and you just move the current date marker here, and then you roll that up to leadership, and maybe put a little exclamation point next to any item on the roadmap that may have a risk, or something's not going well, um, and then maybe another slide that kind of lists those out, right? So just a nice status report update for them. Um, you'll notice I put in the security patching, um, you know, once per, per quarter, essentially. It's a kind of a revolving uh, patch cycle. And then at the bottom, I did include project, project management. You may not always do that, but uh, it is helpful if you've got a large, you know, very busy roadmap like this where you need to track the resources that are working on different things and the risks and things like that. Um, and then finally at the bottom, uh, I have the enablement. So it's kind of called out all by itself, but it definitely helps justify getting training, right? If you're doing all this stuff and you've got all these projects going on, you're going to want the team to know what they're doing, right? So it'll help kind of get that, because usually that's an afterthought, I find. I don't know if you agree with that, but um, getting training is, is very important. So that is pretty much all I had. Is there any feedback from anybody? Any thoughts? Yes? So the question is, how would you communicate this once you're completed? Is that right? Uh-huh. So if, if, if a dependency, if a project, or if an an item on the roadmap is a dependency for something else, and it doesn't didn't go well, it didn't work out, you're not done? Is that the question? How would you update it? It's, it's just going to be that same loop where you're going to come in, you're going to update it, you're going to push your timelines. Um, and that's where it's important to communicate the roadmap with the business because hopefully it's not a surprise and they don't have to come say, why is this not done? They should already know because you've been communicating this you know, weekly or whatever, right? Um, it depends on the organization. Of course, it's such a, a lame answer, right? But I mean, some leadership teams like to know about these things uh, weekly. It, you're really going to have to, I would start with weekly and then once they complain that this is too much, then dial, dial it back from there, right? That's, I, I like to over communicate than under communicate, so.
So you're looking for resources? Um, yeah, I have, I have some stuff. Hit me up on Twitter or we can talk afterwards. Um, and I think this will be available on YouTube or something after the, after the session. So yeah, we can definitely get in touch. Yep. Anything else? What's that? Um, I don't have a template. I mean, I guess I could put one together. Um, there's one that I always use. But if you Google it, honestly, there's all sorts of stuff out there. But if you can't find something, hit me up. Because this is a nice format. It, it looks pretty good. It's easy to manipulate. You could definitely use project and get into Gantt charts and things like that. But that's not me. That's, that's project management. They, they love that stuff. So I keep it simple. All right. Thanks, everybody.